Inside the Interviews, episode 17. Welcome back to the podcast, guys. In today's episode, got um got a few topics I want to discuss. Um, definitely uh, topics that have been not kind of long overdue for me, and I definitely wanted to discuss um, this, especially in depth of what's going on right now. Um, yeah, so let's get on with it. There are two teams who I think uh, that have done uh, particularly well in the season. No, sorry, one team has done particularly well. The other team, not so much. But um, yeah, so let's start off with the bad. Then we'll go off into the uh, second team. So yeah, so the bad team, the Washington Wizards. Now, as you guys know, Russell Westbrook, Bradley Bill. Again, at first I thought eh, it might not be that bad of a uh, swap for the Houston Rockets and for the Wizards. But it seems like it has actually been somewhat, it's not been the best. It's definitely not been the best, Um, you know, for the Wizards. Their season has been very, uh, what can I say? Their season has not been great. Like, you know, their record right now is definitely way below 500. And I'm sure a lot of people were expecting different things as everybody thought, oh yeah, Russell Westbrook's going to be on that team now with Bradley Bill. And, you know, again, a lot of people are going to point the finger and say, oh, Russ is doing this, Russ is doing that. But here's my thing. Russ is probably the most hated player in the league right now. And that's because all he wants to do is work hard. That's from my uh, standpoint of it. And my thing is this, is that for someone who has to do everything, um, you know, he has to do everything in terms of defense, offense, rebounds, assists, steals, blocks, points. He is doing his best. He's doing it all. Now, as for Bradley Bill, who I think is doing also doing a good job, I also think that um he could do a bit he could do a bit more on defense i do think he's all around getting his stats and doing whatever but again um if bradley bill bradley bill is not really like a traditional shooting guard so if he wants to be that traditional shooting guard again he's going to need respite to create some space for him get him open on the three plan or for a mid-range shot then that's what he needs to do but of course as you guys know um the season before Bradley Bill was pretty much put the back on his put his put the team on his back whilst John Wall was out for an injury. And he tried to he tried to get things going. He tried to turn the team around. But again, putting up 30 points a night isn't enough. It isn't enough, clearly. And of course, your team. Now with the team, there's nobody really on that team that they can really kind of I mean, not even the rookies or even some of the vets can help. Like, they have no one really to kind of build around. So, I've heard rumours about Bradley Bill and Russell Russell are being traded before the deadline. If both of them go, then that team has entered rebuild. They've entered rebuild mode. And I think that's for the best. So, put Bill and Russell Westbrook on a contending team. That's the way I see it. But, again, that team is not... Um, I don't know what it is. I just, I thought that um, the team would do a lot better. Scott Brooks, who was the coach of Russell Westbrook back then, back on the Oklahoma City Thunder in 2011, you know, um, yeah, well, 20, yeah, 2010, 2011, 2012, around those areas, around those years. And it was just like, you know, I thought that Russell Westbrook being on a team with a coach he knows well, a coach knows how he knows how to play. But again, that system isn't going to work for the Wizards right now. As you can see, they have tried it. They, I think they've somewhat low-key tried it with Bradley Bill and it didn't work out for Bradley Bill. Again, Bradley Bill, I would say he's a mix between a new uh, a new shooting guard than a traditional shooting guard because um, a traditional shooting guard is more spot up. Bradley Bill can spot up, but he can also create um, his own shot off the dribble and attack the basket. Now, again, those are both good things to have, but again, no one is able to, no one's no one's able to kind of like, you, that things with that team, again, you can't let Bradley Bull do it. He, he can't do his own thing on that team. And I think, um, you know, Bradley Bull, you've seen his frustration, you've seen the pictures, you've seen the memes. You've seen it all all throughout Twitter. He is frustrated with that team just because it's not going anywhere. It's not doing anything for him. It's not doing anything for his career. 
It's, it's definitely the same thing with Westbrook. And I think teams need to give Westbrook a chance. Westbrook is a guy with endurance. He is a guy with endurance. And people just, for the last, what, a year or two, have just said he's been washed. He has done nothing. He is he is bad for this team. Like, he, whatever team he's been on. And, <clears throat> excuse me, it's just like, what? Like, he's bad. Like, no, I think Russell Westbrook is still a good player. He's got a lot left in the tank. His prime is, he's pretty much past his prime, but he's still performing outside of his prime. Again, I guess, you know, he's just kind of past his prime, you know, as he is 31, but he is still performing at a high level. That's what you want from a guy like that, from a point guard. And he can still play making, can still get you assists. Now, the only thing is, I would say with Westbrook is that, of course, him getting triple doubles, I think that kind of needs to slow down a little bit for this year and just kind of focus on getting the team points and himself some points. And because if he goes to the triple double, they somehow end up losing. But then again, I can see why people will say certain things about Westbrook because of his stat line. But again, it's not, you know, it's him. If he's a hard worker, he does what he does best and he just knows his game. So I think people need to cut him some slack. You know, they need to understand that he is not, he may not be the best. He may not be um, the best point guard in terms of like uh, maybe passing and whatnot and even shooting. But again, he does what he's supposed to do. He is trying his full blown best. And, you know, like it, it's, it's sad to see that, you know, Players like him are becoming a non-factor in the league. And I still feel like, no, they've got a lot left in the tank. They just need that final push from a contending team, you know? Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. But I think for Westbrook, if he went... Put it like this. If the Milwaukee Bucks chased after Westbrook instead of uh, Drew Holiday, it would have been... I think that would have been a nice team for <coughs> Milwaukee. But again, him and Yannis are the same type of player. But it's just that Westbrook is better at playmaking. So, yeah. You know what I'm saying? We're just going to have to see what happens and see um, where the Wizards can, you know, improve on and whatnot. I definitely think that they're going to go into rebuild mode. Um, the draft, they're going to have to get some high picks. And, yeah, again, that team is pretty much hit. Um, they've pretty much hit rock bottom. They've hit rock bottom. But yeah, other than that, um, I do feel sorry for the Wizards fans again. Um, I hope there is some. I hope there is some way to actually get this team some wins, and at least like because I I honestly thought they would be an eight C team right now, <coughs> but they're not, and and I, and it's sad to say that because I actually had some expectations for that team. They may not have been a top five team, but I could see them being between six and eight and. Or even ninth. Yeah, they might not make the playoffs, but ninth. It's an improvement. But again, they've you know gone towards the bottom, you know? But yeah, on to the next team. And I think a lot of teams, oh sorry, the league is not really talking about this as much. Is uh the Utah Jazz. They are performing well, really well. And the reason why I say they're performing really well is because they are first in the West. They are first in the West, and a lot of people are now saying, do they have the capabilities to be a contender? Now, when you look at their um, total win percentage and loss percentage, 23 to 5. And a lot of those games that they've played in the last couple of games they've played have been blowouts. I think the last game was against the Philadelphia 76ers. It was by 11 points. And all I can say is that the Utah Jazz, they look like they are the business. Definitely look like it. They look like the old Utah Jazz from the 90s, that they're serious. But can they go the distance of getting to the finals and getting that chip? Because again, if the Bulls wasn't around at the time in the 90s, the Utah Jazz probably would have been two-time NBA champions. So, with the Utah Jazz right now being at the top of the league of um, in the West... I definitely think that um, I can't really. I don't really have much um, negatives to say about them because I definitely think that they have built around the right players. They built around Gobert. They built around Donovan Mitchell, and they've got a system that works for them. Quinn Snyder, who is a very good coach, 
kind of resembles a Greg Popovich, but I don't think he has the the character, the charisma as a Greg Popovich. But again, he himself has definitely embodied, uh, you know, his coaching belief, and he has just kept with it and kept that team going forward. And also, I think um, even the last game, their bench has been doing pretty good as well. Jordan Clarkson, who a lot of people thought that would pretty much fall off after the face of the earth after he left um, uh, the Lakers. Yeah, he's found a place on the Utah Jazz. Off the bench, he had like 40 points. So it just goes to show like what he's doing. You know, Donovan Mitchell again putting up double digit, double digit numbers. Gobert, I think the issue with Gobert now is that again he doesn't he doesn't score enough points. And I that's the thing about the Jazz. I think they've been exposed to that by him not scoring enough points. Yes. Defense is important. But Gobert has a good post game. He's lengthy and he can actually, you know, attack the basket. So I just don't see why he just doesn't put on more points. He goes to the, the rebounds, the assists or the steals or the blocks or whatever he does. And it's just like, you know, what about your points too? You know, he, he's definitely, a, he is a center who is capable of putting up 20 points every game. It, it, it's clear. But he just doesn't do that. And I don't think he needs to. But I think it would be an improvement to see to stop all the naysayers. You, I know I'm sure people have seen what Shaq have said about him. And I think if he does that, most nights, <clears throat> no one can say anything. A lot of people are talking about his contract. Oh, how can they extend his contract for so much more money? And it's because, hey, well, listen, he's in the team. He's in the team where the system works for him. It, You know, it works for him. And... This, and this, and also the system also works for the team. You know, it's not just about the one player getting the contract extension because, yes, he's averaging 11 points, but that's not the whole game point of basketball. Yes, it's to score, which is to win, yes. But other attributes do lie as well. But I do, like I said, I do think uh, Gobert focuses too much on defense. I would like to see more offensive in it, more of offensive game in him, especially when it hits the playoffs because you definitely want to put up numbers in the playoffs just to make sure your team... It has a good fighting chance. Now, it's still early, but then again, I do see the Utah Jazz. I do see the Utah Jazz being consistent. Even if they do drop, I think they'll drop to second or third. I don't see them dropping any, but I don't see them dropping anytime soon because they have actually been playing very consistently. Now, it's still early. The playoffs is not here yet. The playoffs will be in a couple months' time. But again, the team looks ready. They do look like a contender. Um, why is the league not talking about it? Well, again, because LeBron and the Lakers. Of course, LeBron and the Lakers are in the West. And, of course, the Lakers are second. They're doing really good as well. <clears throat> Pretty much where they left off last season. But, again, the league's not talking about it because they don't want the sleeper squads of each conference to outshine a lot of these certain players and it's all good these other players like lebron james shouldn't you know be not saying they shouldn't be outshined but they not saying they can't be spoken about but there's also other teams and other players who do their who are doing fine things for their team for their for their organization so let that be known and the league you know they want to keep have their, all their attention on the lakers mind me i'm a lakers fan but again focus on every aspect of the league don't just focus on one team and one player Specifically, oh, are they going to do a repeat? Are they going to do this and that? No, challenge some of this. Challenge some of your... Challenge the audience. Challenge us as, as the audience to say, do the Lakers, can they repeat? But personally, right now, do I think the Lakers, can they repeat? I don't know. Because it's going to be looking tough. And as you know, the Western Conference is tough. And I think the Utah Jazz might be able to give a run for their money. But again, it's still early. We just have to wait and see and uh, hope for the best for this team because uh, the Utah Jazz again they are a team that um probably one of my top five favorite teams organizations that I've liked over the last what 20 years that I've known and about and they have definitely come a long way they've come a long way from trying to rebuild that because they've been trying their hardest throughout the playoffs to be a good seed but they always end up in the bottom tier of the first half of the league and it's just now they want they want their respect they want their way as Jews so yeah with that being said just watch out watch their games for the rest of the season and tell me that they are not playing a good brand of basketball they are definitely playing a good brand of basketball just tune in whether it's a blowout close game just tune in 
And I'm telling you, you're going to be uh, enjoyed. <clears throat> so, yeah. Last but not least, um, this is also a topic, again, that I've wanted to speak wanted to speak about ages ago, but I wanted to get my bearings around myself. And that is Lamelo Ball. Lamelo Ball, of course. Rookie on the Charlotte Hornets. Should he be starting? The answer to that is, for me, personally, yes. He should be starting. Why should he be starting? He is putting up numbers. Putting up assists, putting up rebounds. Maybe he's in the lineup yet, and we just don't we don't really know. But come on, we would know if he's in the last starting lineup by now. And that's the thing. Lamelo is a good rookie. He's doing his job. I think the team that he's on is fine. He's helped improve that team. Not even just him, but um Gordon Hayward as well. <clears throat> a lot of people said Gordon Hayward has been bad this season, but again, like look at his contract and look at how he's playing this season on the on the Hornets. He's gone back to the form. Of when he was on the Utah Jazz. He's gone back to that form. He's putting up. He's averaging what? At least 22 points. Uh, five rebounds. Four assists. He's doing his thing. And Lamelo, of course, is definitely putting up um, numbers himself. Now, with Lamelo, uh, An issue that, you know, I think the coach might have. Might have with him. Maybe his, his uh, shooting efficiency. In terms of passing, in terms of rebounding, in terms of sc- he's averaging what? Uh, 14 points a game, 6 rebounds, 6 assists. Now, I don't think those are bad stats. I think those are good stats, especially for a rookie. I can definitely see him being rookie of the year. Him or uh, may- him or maybe Talon. There are, there are a couple more, um, couple more rookies that I will talk about in a later podcast. But yeah, um, definitely... Lamelo, he is uh, he, he's a good player. He's definitely um, let, I think I don't know. I just like Lamelo's game in terms of his IQ. I definitely don't think that his IQ doesn't get spoken about enough. His IQ is very very good, and you know again he's got that long accuracy pass just like his brother Lonzo. But of course, who does it better? <laughs> I, I personally think Lonzo does it better, just because Lonzo's you know been in the league a little bit longer. But again, Lamelo he does it good. You know, that still does it good. Now, obviously, I think what the reasons why he couldn't be starting or why he's not starting, uh, yeah, possibly turnover rates, which is he's averaging, what, three, per, three, to three turnovers a game. And, of course, in terms of his uh, shooting percentage, uh, well, shooting percentage has actually been pretty good, 43%. But, again, I think... Um, it depends on how the team is looking at it. If the team are looking at him as, yeah, he's a performing rookie and they're just trying to see how he fits in with the system, I think he's fitting in with the system fine. And I think there was a, a week or two back, he was starting in the game and he was actually doing, he was doing, he was doing his thing, his usual thing, like when he knows when he comes off the bench. Now, <clears throat> I want to see this, I want to see this kid prosper. I can't even lie to you. I want to see him prosper. I think he is a, a good addition to the Charlotte Hornets. As you know, the Charlotte Hornets have been very, very rough. I think ever since they've they've had Kemba Walker, they tried to build around him, didn't work. They traded away Kemba. Well, sorry, Kemba Walker left, signed with the Celtics, and of course they've gone back into their slump. Well, not now, but season before, and now they're looking like a team that is. Um, pretty much, you know, capable of just of just making the playoffs or getting a, maybe a 7 eighth seed spot. So, um, definitely, definitely, definitely a team who are, you know, are on the rise, I hope. If they keep LaMelo, keep the right pieces, they can work. You know, I even see guys like Terry Rozier on that team as well, who's helping out, you know, who's helping out scoring as well. But again, LaMelo... Starter, not starter, definitely should be a starter. No question about that. If he does make mistakes again, he's going to have to learn that on and off the court. And just, yeah, works within the system that Charlotte have, that Charlotte's have for him right now. You know? So, with that being said, I want to see Lamelo more in the lineup. I want to see him, you know, just at least more. I don't know how many games it's going to take for the team to put him actually in the starting lineup. So, we're going to see from now towards the end of the season so yeah anyway guys that was pretty much it for the podcast 
Uh, drop your comments and thoughts down below about any of the topics that I spoke about. Don't forget to like, share, comment and subscribe. And I'll see you for the next one. Peace.